welcome to this evening's episode of Life with Liliana and Friends. I'm actually quite happy to be back in this seat. Um, for those of you who missed it, please go back and watch the episodes that we've done before this where Margaret Voyasawa talks to me about my story. Now today I have a very special guest, someone who just means so much to me. I'm going to say her full name which she won't like and that's Mbulo Arietta Melania Loma Langitora. She is my eldest daughter. I have two children. Uh, Melania, is, she's commonly known, or Nia, you'll hear me refer to her as Nia, and also Gideon. So she's with us at home at the moment, which I'm really excited about. She's 22 and she's meant to be in New Zealand at the moment. She's just finished her degree in, um, from Deakin University. She has graduated. And I'm just gonna say this right through because you know I'm her mom and I'm very, very proud, although she's gonna be embarrassed. <laughs> she graduated with a Bachelor in Arts, majoring in psychology with distinction. So that's how awesome this child is. She's now enrolled in the University of Canterbury and she is doing her postgraduate studies in psychology. So as you can imagine, we get psychoanalyzed all the time in our family. But Melania, welcome to the show. Thank you for making time for your mom. Thank you for having me, mom. I'm really excited for today. So for those of you who watched the episode last week, I spoke about co-parenting. So I and Edwin and I have both been previously married. Melanie and Gideon are from my first marriage. And so we've had quite a journey with co-parenting. Now I spoke about a few things and I thought it would be useful um, to bring Melania on because I talked a lot about how I tried to navigate that season well but it would be really interesting to hear uh, Melania's view or what she was feeling during that season. So Nia, first remember I was talking about, if you remember, because you watch the show right, you watch I all remember. my shows, right? I <laughs> so I spoke about how I was always very careful not to influence your view of your father um, through my behavior or actions and my words. So I always tried my best to be very intentional no matter how much I wanted to say something that was not that nice. Mm. So I'd really like to hear your view. Like maybe just talk us through that time which might have been a bit confusing for you um, but whether that worked. Right. Um, I think that it's quite obvious that now since I have an opinion of my father, it's entirely my own opinion. Yes. So I think that's just a testament to how well you did your job in terms of not influencing my own opinion of him. And um, yeah, I think our relationship is better off for it. So thank you so much for that. Thank you. I'm so thankful that it worked, Melanie. <laughs> I was, I'm glad that was it's your like answer. A bit unsure. <laughs> and by the way, I didn't prep on any of these answers. I told her to just please be entirely honest, but I'm glad to hear that some of it worked. So I also wanted to ask um, some of the comments that I had on the show regarding uh, communication. So I, once I got into a relationship with Pa, so Pa is Edwin, my husband. Um, I tried to communicate that to you in what I remember now to be a little bit of an awkward uh, conversation. Sure. But I thought, right, we need to do this right, so I'm going to communicate this to Melania. So, how do you think that went? How do I think it went? Yes. It went, for sure. It went. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, I think you did a great job. I think that it was a really confusing time for everyone, so we were all just kind of trying to find our um, our footing in that yes. season for sure um, I think that you did let me know what was going on yes um, I think that although you did let me know what was going on it was kind of hard to communicate with you in that way still yes um, how old because, were you at that time so I was about 10 or 11 right around that age yeah yes um, so I think that you did let me know what was going on, but in a very matter-of-fact way. Yes. Um, and so I was kind of missing that, you know, mother-daughter emotional right. bond that we we previously had. And you kind of just told me what was going to happen, and I was lost trying to be like, okay, but what about how I feel, yes. you know? Yes. So, um, yeah, I think you were successful for the most part. I would have just, I think that if you would have, like, told me... Uh, from an emotional standpoint, I would have been able to empathize with the situation a lot more because I was acting out in that time. Yes, yes. Um, but I think that, um, yeah, I think I would have been able to deal with it more if I had that emotional aid. Yes. For sure. 
So you know how mom is. I'm kind of like, when there's a situation and I come to a solution, it's like, right, let's do it and let's move. Very practical in that You're way. You're very practical. Yeah. But I love that point because what you said is that we also need to be considerate of the one on the other side right. of the table, yeah. especially when it's in this kind of situation. Because mm. I, when I recall, I didn't give you any space to come back and say, okay, so you can come to me anytime and tell mm. you, tell me how you feel because really up until that point um, it had been primarily you and me because mm -hmm. Gideon was still new to the world yeah, remember right. he was only four months so you possibly could have been adjusting to okay now there's another child and mm. then um, now Pa's here because Gideon was only four months I think when Pa came along yeah. yeah so while talking about communication still that was what I just asked you was in relation to communicating my relationship with Pa to you right. What about in the time when Momo and I were separated? So sorry for the viewers, Momo is her dad. Um, she's from Nandi and so that's how they, um, how they, what's the word, call their dad or? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So with Momo, when we were separated, because remember we moved out um, back home to my family home. How did you feel about the communication in that time? Right, that one was a lot less um, seamless, I guess you could say. It was yes. a lot more um, confusing for me because um, even in the beginning when you guys were together... So what do you mean by seamless? Oh, if I it guess was like, confusing. Uh, sorry, like a, a less smooth of a transition. Less smooth. Right. Sorry, oh, okay. I should have said smooth. Yeah. Um, but I think uh, for sure in that time it was a lot more kind of like hit or miss because when we right. were... Um, when you and Momo were together, he was always away anyways, like right. doing work or, um, or like traveling for work and, and all those other things. So I think that you guys being separated in a physical sense was common for me. And I, I remember see. when I was about six, you guys <laughs> sat me down at the dinner table and you were like, Nia, we're going to give this another shot. Like we're not going to be separated anymore and uh, separated anymore. Sorry. And I remember thinking, when were they ever separated <laughs> in the first place? I don't even remember that happening. Oh, um, and so I think that it was just, since that was kind of the norm, him not being around or like in the house or present right. at that time, it was very confusing. And so when you guys separated and you decided to divorce like for real, I was like, I still had that kind of thought in my head that they're gonna work it out. Like this is yes. just normal, like they're gonna come back together and then enter Pa and it's just like, oh, I don't like, she's wow. getting very serious with this other guy and um, I thought that, you know, my dad was going to come back yes. and be with the family, so it was very confusing in that way. Such sure. a confusing time, eh? Yeah. Confusing I'm so the sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry okay. about that. It's I'm so sorry. Um, but you raised a good point. I was just going to say to all parents, before you tell your children that you are getting back to get to try again make sure you've told them that you're separated <laughs> before you do that. but that's really interesting thank you for sharing that Nia so I'm really interested for you to share what your relationship is like now with your momo and with your pa and how they're different or how they're mm. similar what is that like oh yeah they're definitely very different from each yes. other um, I think in the beginning momo and I shared more of a father-daughter relationship very like you know I'm the father you're the daughter kind of thing yes um, but I think now as I've gotten older I see him more as a friend okay it's, um, and also I'm a lot like Momo I think you can attest that yes. I'm a, a lot like him so yes. um, it's he's just he understands me on a different level I think and so it makes communication between us really open yes. um, and so we we kind of find similarities in our own experiences and I think that I find a friend in him more as I grow older. Yeah. yeah. Um, with Pa, since we didn't really have that father-daughter relationship yes. in the beginning, he was a lot closer to you and Gideon. I think that over the past two years, we are now beginning to find our own father-daughter dynamic yes. and I'm really excited about that because I haven't really had a a consistently present father figure in the home and yes. so as he is like coming in um, again and we are finding this like navigating this new season I think that we're finally finding our footing in that relationship yes. So yeah it's really nice that's so good yeah. I'm glad to hear that so I wanted to ask also when you during the 
you know, up until now and also when you were younger, what kind of support did you have around you? Like who, is this someone that you could have, mm. that you could speak to and just, you know, let off steam? Right. Um, I don't really think I had a lot of support in that time. Mm. Um, it's just like a, a fact that like, because we were kind of navigating that time, I didn't really want to confide in family a lot because they're so close to the issue themselves. Right. And so they kind of, I didn't want to get you guys in trouble with what I was going through and yes. also with my friends. I'm quite lucky in the fact that you guys' dynamic was quite easy because yes. Momo was very, and Pa, their dynamic was very, um, it was just cordial, you know, it wasn't very yes. complicated. So I kind of felt bad um, kind of uh, comparing my own situation to other wow. situations in divorce because I know it can get really messy. Wow. And uh, you guys' relationship was was pretty good, so I kind of invalidating. Yeah, invalidated so you invalidate your own emotions, own emotions. <laughs> and like gaslit myself in that situation. So I guess I just felt really alone um, in that time. And uh, yes. yeah, I think so. yeah, that's interesting. And I think a lot of people would do that. And mm. especially now, when we hear so many stories, especially of rape, I was just reading this morning of just all these cases, and you yeah. kind of think of you know like stepfathers and you know even fathers and cousins and then you just kind of feel like actually our situation is not that bad so we yeah. should just carry on right. um, but that's not helpful right like knowing what you know from psychology um, would you agree that that's not the right thing to do I completely agree yeah. it's um, it's very detrimental to compare your own situations to other people's situations and yes. say well it's fine because that's not that bad if you invalidate your own emotions then it can fester up inside of you and you tend yes. to isolate yourself in that situation so. right yeah. so I know in recent years your um, relationship with God has mm. really evolved um, can you tell us about that? Because the reason I bring it up is because it's linked to support, and I see you uh, making reference to that a lot and leaning in to God. Yeah. Um, no, my relationship with God was a lifesaver for me. Wow. Um, in a time where I felt really isolated, it was kind of the only lifeline that I had in that yes. way. Um, I just learned to lean on Him in a totally different way. Yes. And I think that. I think it's true that we often see God how we see our earthly father, father figures. Mm -hmm. And in the past two years, just learning to separate those two and seeing God for who he is and seeing my father figures on earth for who they are, yes. just helped me to not limit God in that way and um, for how I see my earthly fathers. So I think that just that, uh, that was probably the biggest blessing in an otherwise really lonely season, just leaning on him completely. Yes. Mm. So while, before we move on, I just wanted to um, ask while on that, because you're a young adult, you're 22 years old, um, and I can imagine a lot of your friends are doing a lot of other things um, mm -hmm. and not being in church. So I, th I thought it might be helpful if we could just, if maybe you could just tell us a bit about how you um, not only spend your time, but what you do to keep yourself you know, aligned uh, or on the path that God set out for you. Right. So I think as I grow older, um, I think uh, peer pressure was big when I was kind of in my late teens. Yes. Now I'm starting to find that choosing your company is so important. Right. So I guess just like surrounding yourself with the right people that are going to build you and help you grow is something that I'm really learning, especially after quarantine. Yes. Having that time to myself, I really just had to reevaluate um, what I want to get out of this life and where I am right now in this season. Yes. And I think that just being in church and really just throwing myself into those types of spaces has really helped me to, to grow in not only my relationship with God, but my, I guess, just kind of focus yes. in what I really want to achieve. Yes. So in terms of your relationship with God, what does that look like on an everyday Right, level. so um, I think my quiet time is an important yes. part of the day. And what's um, quiet time for those so, who don't? Okay. <laughs> quiet time is just time where I spend in God's Word. It can be 10 to 15 minutes for me. Um, I just kind of open my Bible or I use a Bible plan and I just kind of spend that time thinking about um, my relationship with God and just letting Him speak to me. Right. And I like too that you also mentioned the people that surround you, right? Because I also mentioned in the 
um, in my conversations that that's so important it's not only so that you can you know like have people to talk to or support your support network but they also hold you accountable yes they do yes. <laughs> and I know the people that you're with they have no hesitation in holding you accountable None at right? all. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're amazing for yes. sure so we're going to finish off shortly but before then I just was hoping that you could share with um, the viewers maybe just some advice for others maybe for some uh, young adults or even children that might be watching this for those who are going through similar circumstances what would your advice be for them um, that's a really good question I think for me the biggest thing that I really wish I didn't do was blame myself for what you right. guys were going through. I think a lot of kids in my situation tend to blame themselves for the break, breaking apart of their parents' relationship right. and the, of the family unit. Um, I just want them to know and they have to realize very early that it's not their fault. Yes. Um, relationships coming together and breaking apart is just a part of life and right. you shouldn't be able to you shouldn't take on that burden because it's not yours to carry. Right. Um, I think also that uh, just developing some really positive coping mechanisms is yes. really important for uh, for kids going through uh, what I went through or even worse situations. I think coping mechanisms are really important. Yes. Would you mind just telling us about coping mm. mechanisms? Right. So what, coping, what is that? Yeah. So coping mechanisms are strategies that people use in uh, stressful events or traumatic events. Okay, you're talking like someone who's got a Bachelor of Arts oh, in sorry. Psychology okay. with distinction. Can you just like dumb it right <laughs> oh, down? Right, please? sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so coping mechanisms are kind of ways to deal with negative emotions when people are going through stressful times or okay. trauma. For example. So negative, let's talk about some negative coping mechanisms first because I think it's like something that a lot of us tend to use a lot more often especially yes. in situations of like families breaking apart. Um, substance abuse is a really big, uh, prominent, sorry, yes. coping mechanism and also just isolating yourself. Okay, so, so sorry, let's just go back a step. So you're talking about when, um, say, if for example, mm -hmm. your parents are arguing a lot, yeah. or there's evidence or there's signs that they may be separating right. and you don't know how to deal with that stress. Yeah. And so you try and look for something. An to, outlet. An outlet, yes. yes. And so a negative ways to manage that are? Substance and alcohol abuse. Yes, okay. I think that's the most common, most the most common one. Sorry, and then um, it would probably be isolating yourself. Is I think a lot broader of a coping mechanism, but it definitely applies in this. Yes. Kind of conversation. Yes. So before we move on to mm -hmm. some ways of uh, like positive coping mechanisms, because I know, and I spoke about this in our interviews, is that I used alcohol a lot, mm -hmm. and so I felt like at the time that was a great coping mechanism. So tell us why that isn't a good coping mechanism, alcohol, because that will probably be the most common. Right. So uh, coping mechanisms like alcohol and are, drugs, sorry, and I should drugs mention that, yeah. are unsustainable. And they often make the problem a lot more. What's 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 unsustainable, so, Nini? Unsustainable. Sorry, I'm using these all these terms. I should be it's able okay. to communicate a My bit better. My brain is not as big as yours, Daddy. So sorry. So, uh, <laughs> basically, in the long run, it can't work. Um, it right. makes the problem a lot worse. Right. Um, and I guess the it can lead to even more trauma and more stress. Why does it make the problem worse? Okay, so turning to those kinds of. Um, I guess substances make it worse because the decisions that you make while under that influence often lead to even more problems. Yes, good point. Yeah. Yes. And I think relying on that because the effect of it is so temporary, um, yes. you often become reliant on those substances yes. to kind of push down those emotions. And the and obviously, as soon as that effect wears off, the problem is still there. Yes. Yeah. So you're not really doing much. You're just kind of suppressing the inevitable. Yes. I agree there because that is exactly what happened to me. And I also spoke about how they'll, you'll get to a point where you just can't suppress anymore. Yeah. And that's quite dangerous yeah. to reach that point. So what are some positive coping mechanisms? So I think in relation to what we were talking about yes. in the family, home and divorce and all that, um, all of those stem from bottling up your emotions. So okay. I think that 
when it comes to positive coping mechanisms, just seeking some social support or venting your emotions is yes. a really huge help. Yes. And um, if you can't, if you can't see anyone around you, that um, I guess you could do that to Lifeline and um, yes. child helplines are very very useful yes. especially because um, if they can't deal with your immediate situation they're very good at referring you yes. to other resources that will help so I think that's so important um, but yeah that those two resources are so useful and I think that yeah. um, especially when you are trying to protect your your family situation just talking to someone that you don't know um, yes. and that will help you from a kind of um, person that's outside of your situation's view yes. is very, very helpful in that situation. Yes. Menya, yeah, thanks so much. You've given us so much insight. You even made me think about a number of things. And I really hope that people have taken away from this. So one of the couple of key things. So Melania spoke about earlier how it's not just enough for us to communicate, but it's also important for us to give them the space to digest and to process and for us to support the children along, along the way. But communication is key. Right, it is key. Like I said, before you tell them you're getting back together, tell them that you're separated first. But also when we talk about dealing in these situations, so um, if you are a young adult or a child and you're finding it very difficult to communicate with your parents, um, you can go ahead and call the numbers that will be shown at the bottom of the screen. Um, they're free services that you can call yourself. But if you are a parent in this situation, I suggest that you actively try and um, or actively try and help your children through this by showing them where they can get professional help you know once upon a time we didn't have access to uh, help in this way that was free so Nia thank you so much you are such a blessing to me I really don't know how you t actually I do know how you turned out to be so amazing and really that's not all me um, it's mostly God and so I'm so thankful for you. I'm so proud of everything you do and I'm really excited to see what you are going to be doing in the future, not only for yourself but others because you have got such a beautiful heart for other people. So thank you for joining me on the show. Thank you, Mom. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. So thank you for joining us this evening. We will be back next week, same time, same place, 8 p.m. We are also live streaming through YouTube, so don't miss it. Next week, we will have Mr. Edwin Warid, AKA Pa, on the show, and he's going to talk a bit about his story. So I hope you can join us then. Thank you for your time and have a good evening. Vinakabakaleo.